The artist views his work, hung for the first time. We're here at the R. Michelson Gallery on Main Street in Northampton for the annual showing of local hero, New York Times bestselling author and illustrator, Mo Willems's annual show here that's always a benefit for a local organization. That's exactly right. Before we talk about the local organization that this is a benefit for, what's the theme of the show, Mo Willems? This exhibition is based on my annual sketchbook this year, and it's called A Hundred Doodles. Are there actually a hundred doodles? There are no. There 101. Are, there are 101. <laughs> it starts at zero. I noticed this already. <laughs> exactly. It starts at zero. I did the hundred, and then on the back cover, I did the final 100. Why, if it's an annual sketchbook, aren't there three hundred and sixty six given that this is a leap year. It's been very nice to be on your show, Monty. <laughs> A hundred is a lot. 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 So, you know, so I've been doing this sketchbook, I think this is year 31. And I've always said it's a 50-year project, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a 40-year project. Okay. And so this year was a year where I was like, oh, I just can't come up with anything that, you know, usually it's something I don't get to do or it's maybe more emotional or something like that. And what I realized was I was stuck, like maybe we all are sometimes, and the way to get unstuck is fiber. How long are these segments? <laughs> They're a lot longer now that we're on public radio. <laughs> it's like the Spanish Inquisition. No one was expecting <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! So it's exercises. And like, it's sort of practice what you preach. I always say like, you know, just exercise, just doodle, just do something. So I came up with this exercise. What can I make out of a hundred numbers? And it was freeing. That's the thing is just the physical act of doing is freeing. And from there, I decided to go back and we've made some uh, snack doodle videos where I've done the entire alphabet and I've done numbers one through 31, different drawings, more improvisational. Again, this year's sketchbook was a inadvertent release. What's, what is snack? What is snack doodles? What is snack so doodles? you remember, um, this is a local show, so you remember in Massachusetts we had a pandemic. Mm. Uh, oh, this year? Yes. <laughs> it was a, an epidemic. And, and during that time I did a couple videos called the lunch doodle videos where I drew and I walked around my studio. And so on the four-year anniversary we decided to make a bunch of shorter videos of just drawing exercises called snack doodles that are available on my YouTube channel. I can't believe I'm saying that, but there we go. <laughs> on the Mo Willems Workshop YouTube channel. Well, we're going to talk about that. Which is the studios. The studios uh, put them up. So every week there's a different sort of exercise where I'm playing with a letter and turning it into something. And I'm hoping that you will and maybe turn it into something different than what I did. Do people ever send you what they've made working alongside your videos? I have seen some stuff and it's really great. And of course, I, I love the copying, but I love even more the not copying, the sort of growing out of that. Did you ever um, watch Captain Bob? Was that on when you were a kid? No. It was like you wake up at oh. like six o'clock in the morning on Saturday and there was this old fisherman dude. It must've been a regional Boston because he had a look. super strong Boston accent. I should say a wicked strong Boston accent. <laughs> and you would just draw along with him. And then you would send him your drawings and then he'd like maybe show your drawing at the on end TV. Of the wow. show, Hello everyone, Captain Bob here again on uh, Nature World. I, I love that. that. It was so crazy. You're the new Captain Bob. So wow, that's what I'm I, I, I don't you know. You get to be Captain Mo. Right? I don't even know that I'm a captain you yet. Be Pri Private Lieutenant Mo, Mo Willow. Lieutenant. I, I could be Lieutenant, but I do draw with my right hand. What might be lost, because this is a non-visual medium, is that um, when you say you're inspired by the numbers, you draw a number, yes. and then whatever that number looks like, you turn into a sketch around it, which I is interesting mine. because you've yeah. always, I've seen you give workshops to kids especially, teaching them how to draw and to doodle. And you basically say, if you can draw if you shapes, can write your name, if you can write right. your name, you can do anything. That's exa exactly right. Well, and if you write your name, basically, uh, letter is a shape, mm -hmm. and uh, your name is a bunch of shapes in the right order, and a cartoon or a doodle is a bunch of shapes in the right order. Mm -hmm. I think for me what the trick was, was not falling back on the same thing every time. So sometimes it's a full character, sometimes it's part of a character, sometimes it's a design. Here in the 96, it's a set of word bubbles. Oh yeah, I like um, that. I like 51, this sort of this unicorn. unicorn. Here, 32 is a, a pregnant lady and a, with a baby. Pushing the carriage, so the pregnant belly is the three, the, the lump of the three, and the two is the, is the baby yeah. carriage. you got a dragon. I have a dragon. I've got someone eating ice cream. I've got puppies. I have a miner. 
a literal minor, not an not under 18 underage. year old person. Right. Yes. You've exactly. got your name. You've got them too, probably somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. here you can see the title is using only numbers for those letters. So it looks like the word doodles, but there's a number 100 inside of it. We're speaking with Mo Willems. We're at the R. Michelson Gallery on Main Street in Northampton, where his annual doodles or art exhibit is here, and it's always a fundraiser. So you can go and purchase this art and it goes to support a cause. And again, we'll talk about Grow Food Northampton and the cause in just a little bit. I'm wondering, the shape of the numbers inspired a lot of the doodles. Are any of these inspired by what might have been going on on the day you decided to draw that number? Like something that was more actually happening oh, to you. Wow. So I know you've done a lot of work with, at the Kennedy Center with orchestras. So I see yes. like number 23 is a, a, a wacky wild conductor with, with, yes. with hair. Yeah. I don't know that it's been that specific, but yes, I am doing stuff uh, with the Kennedy Center. I'm just about to do some new stuff. I've got a workshop coming up in September. We're going to do a show called Mo at the NSO where it's going to be a lot of very, very silly music. And the idea is, you remember Leonard Bernstein hosted a series of concerts for the youth. So imagine a show like that hosted by someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's just like our show. <laughs> but I will say one of the things that often I find with nonfiction stuff for kids is it assumes that kids don't know anything. And then we just tell you. And this is the opposite. Kids understand how music makes them feel. So I'm hopefully going to let the audience tell me what's going on rather than me telling the audience what's going on. And we're very excited because I'm co-hosting with Ludwig von Beethoven, <laughs> who looks very much like the pigeon but won't admit that he is, in fact, the pigeon. Don't let the pigeon drive an orchestra. <laughs> That's exactly Absolutely right. Absolutely let the pigeon drive the orchestra. <laughs> The beneficiary of this Doodles exhibit here at the R. Michelson Gallery is Grow Food Northampton. I happened to go there the day after these epic floods last July and talked to a bunch of the farmers and people working with Grow Food Northampton. Um, this is the eighth annual benefit exhibition. Why Grow Food Northampton? Why is that something that was important to you? And I'm assuming to your wonderful wife, Cher Willems, who I know is really involved in lots of food justice. That is exactly right. So Cher does a lot of work with food. We think a lot about our neighbors. These doodles were, are made possible by a full tummy. There's no way that I could find anything in these shapes that was interesting if I wasn't well fed. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about the early days of the pandemic, one of the things that did happen was there was some legislation and some things changed so that a lot of people who would have been very food insecure were less so. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those laws are ending. I have a real concern that food insecurity is going to become greater again. So we wanted to put our dollars, but also to talk about that now, to think of it before it gets worse to start thinking about how we're going to handle less access to food for folks. And we think that Grow Food Northampton is doing a lot of interesting stuff on a lot of interesting levels. I mean, in terms of education, in terms of what they're doing with food, in terms of land use, all of that stuff is really pretty awesome. And this is just a very small way to say thank you. It's a great way to support it because you can get this original artwork from none other than Mo Willems. And they're wonderful. Yeah, they're um, great. They're a lot of fun. You've given the reasons for choosing Grow Food Northampton. Last year it was Empty Arms. How do you choose which charities? Is it always share choosing which charities? <laughs> you just asked me how to share choose which charities? <laughs> I said, yeah. is, is it always <laughs> share choosing which charities? I feel it's a random process, I guess, on some level. It is the two of us talking about what has mattered to us in the last year and what we think is going to matter in the coming year. Look, we are, we're only a drop in the bucket. We're trying to do what we can, and we're just trying, if we can, to remind folks that we have neighbors. And when we see our neighbors, I think we are reminded that we live in a neighborhood. And I think it behooves us to do the best that we can for our neighbors. It's worth noting that you and Cher have been tremendously generous for the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, which is mothership hunger when it comes mm. to taking care of our neighbors like that. So thank you publicly once again. Oh, that. that's, that, that's fine. That's fine. It, it really is the least we can do. Again, anything that I do that is creative, you, this, this gallery has got tons of artists, really beautiful work. Anybody who's making stuff that makes you stop and think and go, wow, they probably did that on a full stomach. Can I drive the bus? No, no. Can I drive the bus? No, no. Why can't I drive the bus? No, no. A 
I'll give you five bucks. No, 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 no. Let me drive the bus. No. Let me drive the bus. It is worth noting that not just you, Mo Willems, as a, uh, an author, illustrator, especially for kids, is here. You can go see some of the more surreal paintings of, of Dr. Seuss, right. um, all of the local artists, illustrator community, Tony Dieter Lizzie, Jared J. Krasowska, are all showing here, as well as a bunch of other amazing artists, sculptures. And I would, I would say, if you're interested in how picture books are made or interested in wanting to make a picture book, come see this original art because it will scare you by how hard it is. <laughs> it will slow you down, but will also give you the determination that not only can you do it, but picture book art is one of the few entertainment industries left where you can be an individual, where anybody's work that's great is great because they are showing who they are in the way that they are. That's really remarkable. I love that you have to go see your drawings in a safe, though. That it makes it extra yes, scary. That's my safe. Like, are they going to lock me that, in there? That's that's my safe space. Mo Willem's sketchbook, the eighth incarnation of it here at our Michelson Gallery, a benefit for Grow Food Northampton. One hundred doodles, all based on the numbers between zero and one hundred. If you want to see a number, if there's a number that's special to you, if you guys are really us, what number are we thinking of? that because it's a year of your birth, I'm sure. Is it? <laughs> it was my number in football, but that Is was that for right? the same reason. <laughs> I am sure that Paul or anyone... I already know that looks like an alien because I saw it on right. the... I saw it on the... You actually... Is. is this available, Paul? This poster for people too or no? Oh, yeah. Ah, there's, there's also... Oh, there, yeah. there is a I giant... Know. There is a poster that's uh, all 101 but there's numbers. But there's a book... With, there's this, the sketchbook with all of the pictures yes. in it, which is a little more accessible oh, if yeah. you want to see it on a, on a right. handheld scale. Yeah. Well, the sketchbook is something that, unfortunately, I only send to clients and friends. This is something that I've done now. Is it 31 years? So 31 years. Well, um, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> Come be friends with yes. Mo Willems, and then you can have a sketchbook. <laughs> I get one. I don't know if it is worth all the hassle of befriending me <laughs> for a booklet that is 32 pages. I don't, I think the cost benefit analysis is you're better off come to the gallery, look at the poster. What's fun about this is it's simple, anyone can do it, but it's also challenging. It's fun to look at things in different ways and not to get too deep about it, but if there's anything that I think we as a culture could do is look at things in different ways mm. as a practice. Do you ever play Exquisite Corpse? I have, I have, and I really enjoy that. I think that's, that's a lot of fun. That's a sort of a fun game to do as well. And this reminds me of that a little bit. So like somebody takes a piece of paper and folds yeah, it into folds thirds. It so yes. you can't see what the other person has done, but you see like kind of the lines where it meets up. So that's you can exactly. They leave like two little lines to play with, and then you play with it, and then you leave the next person two little lines. And squiggles is a great game too. Mm -hmm. just, to, just to make a squiggle and then to turn it into something. Any of these things are really, really fun, and it's a way to spend time time together and to discover yourself. And what I would say to the grown-ups listening, draw with the kids. If you make it cool, it is cool. And you will find drawing is a physicalized form of empathy. So when you are drawing something, you are empathizing with that thing. So when I am drawing number 69 and figuring out it's an alien, I'm actually thinking about that alien. Where did that alien come from? What is that alien doing? And I become more generous to aliens. There you go. It's a space alien, just in case yeah. you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> With tentacles. Yeah. It's real cute. It is cute. These are all cute. I love, like, you know, there's this Elvis looking guy at number 15, a very French kind of Phineas and Ferb maybe inspired yeah, number right. 17. Yeah, that's right. I also <laughs> the pigeon made it into the count. Uh oh, where's the pigeon? Ah, very, very good eye. There you go. The pigeon makes it into everything that somehow. Right. That's the that Easter egg you should know yeah. about. It's an, an egg laid exactly. by a pigeon. Basically. And the reason that it is that number is that is my favorite number. Is it? Oh. Absolutely. It's prime. You can split it in any different way. It's always symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And it's the date of my birthday. We're with Mo Willems. We've been speaking about the pigeon. That is one of the mm. things you are most famous for, as well as Elephant and Piggy, and Knuffle Bunny, and myriad other things, including being the education artist in residence at the Kennedy Center in Washington, mm. D.C., despite the fact that you live in Northampton. The pigeon has become three-dimensional. Yes. With your YouTube channel, the pigeon is now a living thing. 
It's a puppet. Okay, I didn't want to call. No, no, no. I didn't want to call the pigeon a puppet have, in front of you have, if it was going to be offensive no, to the pigeon. No, we have some very talented pigeoneers uh -huh. who are taking the pigeon and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. There is a quick little show called The Pigeon Explains, in which the pigeon explains basic things, but again, much like me, doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pigeon explains. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Hello, it's me, the pigeon. So we get real kids to actually explain how to do those things. That's I wonderful. saw the one where the pigeon explains how to kick a soccer ball, <laughs> and that was hilarious. I and mean, it was really, really fun. And this is, you know, not, although you did animation for them, you mm. worked at Sesame Street for a That's long time. right. I was at Sesame Street for a long time. So I do have some experience with puppets and puppeteering. The, the, pup, the pigeon here behind the pigeon is a Sesame guy, young guy named Bradley unbelievably great, great with the improvisation. Mm -hmm. And what I like particularly about this is that this pigeon, uh, A, can do things and I can stay at home. Nice. Right. And B, <laughs> is interacting with real kids. And that I'm seeing less and less on Sesame, and that I mm. love. Mm. My favorite bits always were the bits where the puppet and the kids were connecting on some sort of deep level. And it's the same thing with the pigeon. The kids are looking right at the pigeon. Yeah. P kids are talking to the pigeon. P kids are giving the pigeon advice. Mm -hmm. Also off camera, just like, you gotta calm down, man. You gotta calm down. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. <laughs> They're not wrong. So it's been fun. And this has been part of the sort of larger thing of sort of expanding the universe of these characters, but also expanding the spotlight. Like, Bradley Freeman is a great pigeoneer. Mm -hmm. We've got some great writers. We're doing stuff on a larger scale, and I'm really hoping to widen the spotlight to include other artists, but also to include you, the artist, who is interacting with these things. But we've got lots of videos. We're premiering uh, Knuffle Bunny Across America, which I'm very excited about, where we give a Knuffle Bunny to an interesting kid, and they take it for a day and show what their life is like, oh which is God. really great. <laughs> My name is Jeremiah. I'm eight years old. I live in Lake Worth, Florida, and I'll be a professional hockey player when I grow up. Knuffle Bunny, you're on my team. There are three Knuffle Bunny books, and yes. God, if you're not crying by the end of the third one, you have you, you have no you heart. Have no heart or soul. <laughs> you have no heart. You, uh, I hope you would cry. Yeah. yeah. I could. I remember the first time I read that to my then young children, and I just had to stop. Why is Dad crying all over the book? It's wet now. It's so great. Well, that's why it's a slick paper. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and the concert. We did the comedy concert oh, in yeah. San Francisco. Sketch fest. Sketch fest. Not your type of sketching usually. No. But hey, it's yeah. perfect. But it's all sketching, yeah. right? right. It's, it's all loose and quick, and has a point, but is fun, and so. Sketchfest, we taped the show, so the whole concert is there. It's got Al Yankovic, my favorite, singing a song with made up words that I made up. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream truck's broken. On my tears, I am choken. There will be no, 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 no ice cream for me. And this. Mo Willem's sketchbook, the eighth incarnation of it here at R. Michelson Gallery, a benefit for Grow Food Northampton, 101 doodles, all based on the numbers between zero and 100. How long will this be up here? And how long are these available for purchase to support Grow Food Northampton? These, these uh, will be up for a month. All of these, even if you decide to buy them in the month of May, the benef our proceeds will still go to Grow Food. Keep putting good in the world. Yes. All your good is good. Was. It's all value. Then there was something about the broken brakes. Ah! What was I hearing? What were they saying? The ice cream trucks broke.